Hi, and welcome to another Providing Resources for Emergency Preparedness YouTube video. And you're probably saying, this is a baking video. Why is she dancing? I am dancing because I am so happy to share with you one of my favorite quick breads and probably my daughter's favorite quick breads too. Today we are making my favorite humbler. We're going to put this pan to work. And that is our topic today for this Providing Resources for Emergency Preparedness YouTube video. Pop over. are and they're very simple to get started overs, but you're going to need some milk and you need your milk to be room temperature so I set mine out for about an hour you're going to need some kosher salt as always the salt is kosher you're going to need three organic eggs you're going to need some unbleached all-purpose flour you're going to need some baking powder a stick of butter I already cut it in and half. that's what we need for our supplies for our hardware you're going to need some popover pans, and these are popover pans that you can buy. I recently purchased these uh, new ones because my old ones had rusted out. They were such hard workers and very good to my family, but I needed new ones. So I went to um, Macy's, and I got these for $19.99. Now, they come in various, with the coupon, of course, they come in various sizes, and this is a 6 on, but you can also find them in a 12 on. So, depending on what size you want, you can get the smaller cups or you can get the larger 600 cups. And I have two pans here that I'm working with today. You're going to need a bowl and a sister. And I mix up my batter in this one dish with a whisk and because it's easier to pour into the cup. And I have a cup mixing cup with a spout. And you're definitely going to need your kitchen timer today so I hope so that's yeah, our one of those. So we're going to get started making our popovers but normally when I start my basic baking videos I tell you the first thing we want to do is time our oven. I'm not going to tell you that today. Today we're going to do it a little different because we have to. Before we turn on our oven we want to turn on our oven light if you have one. And you want to check the level of your oven grate because these popovers are going to pop up off the pan. They're going to rise up. So you want to put your pans in here, and you want to see if you have enough headroom. Now, I'm not going to go with that. I'm going to actually lower my grates one. So I'm going to take my grates out. I'm going to lower it. Now, see, I feel a lot more comfortable with that because these are definitely going to pop up and you want to make sure you have enough headroom in your oven to make sure that when your popovers pop up they don't pop up and hit the top of your oven and cause a mess in your oven. So that's the first thing you want to do before you turn your oven on. Alright, now we're going to turn our oven on and we're going to get our oven heated up to 425 degrees. just to get it started, all right? And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our pans ready. Because before we mix up our batter, we want to ensure that our pans are buttered and ready to receive our pop -up. Now, you've all seen me do this trick before, but if you're new to providing resources videos, um, the way I butter up any baking dish I'm working with is I use a sandwich bag. I grab a little butter, and my butter is at room temperature, and I put it on the bag. So if you have nails or acrylics, your hands don't get all dirty. And see, I just let the bag do the work for me. And you go in here, and you smudge it around. And when you're greasing the popover pans, you want to get the tops, 
You want to get the sides. You want every ounce of this pan to be greased because if you don't, you will quickly find your popovers will stick and not pop out easily. So you want to take your time and do this right. And make sure that you get all the sides of your popover pan. So you want to make sure that you get every inch of this popover pan. And like I said, using this bag helps a lot because it really helps to keep the underside of your nails clean. And it helps you get into the little crooks and crevices of the popover pan. Alrighty. Alright. And then as you can see, I made sure that I got the inside of the popover pan really well. I hope you can see that. Alright. And I placed them on the tray. And as soon as my oven beeps, we're going to place the popovers in our pan. So now that we got our pans all nice and buttered and we're still waiting on our oven to preheat, I want to go over some popover rules. There are popover rules. Now this um, quick bread is easy to make, but there are some strong rules you must follow. And I'm going to discuss those with you here. Once you put the popover mix in this pan and in the oven, do not open your oven under any circumstance. Unless your oven is on fire, you do not want to open this oven. If you open your oven, your popovers will do, de will deflate. It's kind of like a souffle. So the popovers, you have to leave the oven closed. I don't care what they look like, what they smell like. Until that time is up, this is why you want to have a good timer on hand. You want to leave your oven closed. The other thing I want to talk to you about, the popover rules, is you do not mix your batter until your popover pans are ready. So when you put these popover pans in here to preheat and warm up, put them in, then start mixing up your batter. So that's why I'm waiting for my oven to fully heat up and it to beep. And once I hear the little beep beep, let me know my oven is ready. Then I will mix my batter together, the liquids in the dry, so that when my pans are warmed up, they're ready to, for that liquid to go right in those hot pans to get the maximum poof. So those are my popovers. So as you can see, I placed my popovers on a tray because I did butter the edges, and some of the butter is going to drip down, and you want a tray to catch that so it doesn't hit the bottom of your oven and burn. So now we're going to open our oven and we're going to get these trays in. And remember your oven is set to 425 degrees so it's going to be hot. So be careful. Alright, I'm going to position those trays where the butter can go right on the tray and not drip down. And so that's ready. So now I'm going to get my mix together really quickly. And it's very simple and easy. So first thing is my wet ingredients. In here I have three organic eggs and I'm going to put those right in. Room temperature, very important for your eggs to be room temperature with your popcorn. I have my one and a half cups of room temperature milk that I let set out for about an hour. It's not going to spoil, you're not going to die. And I'm just going to whisk that up right in this nice two-quart bowl. And I can't remember where I got this big bowl from, but you can find it online and I'm sure it wasn't more than $20 or this big Pyrex, as you call it. So you're going to whisk that up and you want that egg and milk to be whisked up very well. And it's just that easy, egg and milk. Okay, so we got that going. The next thing we want to do is we want to get our flour and our dry ingredients together. So if you've watched previous basic baking videos by me, you know that I am not a fan of the scoop method. So when you're measuring out your flour, do not scoop your flour into the cup. I want you to take a spoon, ladle your flour into your cup, and level it off. That's how you make sure you get the right amount because scooping packs it in and you get a different amount every time. Okay, so we're going to ladle one and a half cups of flour. 
And when you ladle the flour in, it only takes an additional second. You know, you're not that pressed for time. And the thing about baking is, you can take your time and relax and enjoy it. Instead of making it a task, you make it a pleasurable experience. So that was one, and we want a half. My family loves what I make, so anything, anytime I bake, they enjoy it. And plus, I get to use up my food storage flour that I have on hand and rotate, rotate through that. All right, so we got our one and a half cups of unbleached all-purpose flour. Next, we want our kosher salt. The salt is always kosher in my kitchen. Like I said before, I don't even own any of that salt with the little um, round box with the lady held in the umbrella. Salt is always kosher. So we want three-fourths teaspoon of kosher salt. So that's one, two, and three. Alrighty. And then I want one-fourth teaspoon of baking powder. And you want to fluff that up and you want to level it off you want to add that to be sifted in with the other ingredients. So then you want to sift your ingredients. Clean that up and get that out of my way. So you want to sift your ingredients. And I always keep my hand still and I bring the flour to my hand. Look. Alrighty. And that's what you want to sift out, the stuff you don't want. So my pans are warming up. And they're getting to where I want to be. So now is the time for me to combine these two. So I'm going to start whisking. And I'm going to slowly add my flour. Do not dump it all in at once. And you're going to get a thin runny batter when you're done. A little at a time. And let that work in with your whisk. Okay. I'm going to work this in before I add the rest. And you don't want to overwork it, too. It's kind of like pancakes. You want to work it just enough to mix it through and leave it alone. So, I'm going to finish whisking this up. Okay. Let my pans get hot. And that's it. For the batter. Alrighty. Okay, that's it. I'm done whisking. Leave it alone and let it be. What I am going to do is I'm going to grab a spatula and I'm just going to clear out that bottom to make sure that I got everything whisked through and it looks like I did. So that's wonderful. So my pans are ready. I can smell them. And I'm going to pull those out. I'm going to get me some oven mitts on here because the oven is set to 425 degrees, and if you go in here, you're going to burn yourself to death without. Okay, so my pans are ready. Okay, and they're smoking, so I'm going to turn on the fan because they're hot. And I have my butter still out because I'm going to go back and I'm going to add a little butter to each pan. Sorry about the fan. I just don't want my smoke detectors going off. Just a dab of do ya. Okay. So now I got my butter added to my pans. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I'm going to put my glove on because I'm going to have to do some turning. I'm going to turn my pan. And I'm going to come in here with my spout, and you'll see why I made it in this container. And you don't want to fill your pans no more than half full. Okay. If you fill your pans all the way, you're going to have a hot mess in your oven. That is a rule, the third rule of popovers. Only half full, no more than half. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So we have our popover 
pans full and we're going to place them in our oven at 425 degrees for five minutes. right there. I'm going to give this one a poke. So I went through all of my popovers and I gave them a pop, a poke. But I want to show you the inside of them, inside of them, and they're hot, so, <laughs> of course. So I'm going to cut one open for you. Got my little bread knife here. And you'll see the inside is pillowy, but the outside is crusty. Ah, look at that steam. I don't know if that steam is being picked up by the camera. Ooh, ooh, see how soft and fluffy like that is? But the outside is nice and hot. You see how I'm trying to hold it like I'm She-Ra or He-Man? You can tell how old I am by my reference to She-Ra and He-Man. The outside is nice and crusty. See how? But the inside is soft and pillowy and delicious. My daughter's going, mmm, did y'all hear that? <laughs> so I'm going to pull that apart. Let me see. Let me see. That's off the train. So these are our finished popovers. And another thing I want to tell you about popovers is you can mix up the variety. These are plain popovers. But you can make Parmesan garlic popovers that will pair well with your pasta, you your red sauces. Um, your, you can pair this up with a good roast or a beef stew. 
and you can add thyme and rosemary will work well. You just uh, chop that up or add it dry right into, in your batter and you can put that in here to give another flavor to the flavor, plain popcorn. Depending on what you're making. So you can flavor these up. So this is a very versatile quick bread that you can make for your family on a So that is basis. our delicious, easy to make quick bread popovers. I hope this video has been a blessing to you and your family. Thank you for watching. I noticed that we also have a lot of new YouTube subscribers. Thank you all who subscribe and watch my channels every Monday or and my other um, providing resources for emergency preparedness YouTube video because we talk about more than baking. We also talk about getting your family emergency preparedness plan together. So thank you for watching another Providing Resources for Emergency Preparedness YouTube video. Like us on Facebook. That will be somewhere right here. Um, follow us on Twitter. That message will be somewhere right here. And visit our website down here at www.providingresources.com. Thank you and have a blessed day and we'll see you in the next video.